When I was young, I was having lunch with my grandmother. And while we sat on the porch, a bird came darting in, making a big circle above our heads. It looked absolutely terrifying. It then started flying into this corner over and over again, confused. This really caught my attention as it was very unusual. I asked my grandmother to come look and she immediately puts her hand to her heart and says, this is not good. She tells my grandpa, who gets a long pole and a t-shirt and he's able to cover the bird and set it free. My grandmother said something like, poor thing, it must have been horrible. It makes my heart sink. My grandmother looked really distressed and later on, she admitted having an overwhelming feeling of being in a life and death situation. The very next day, my father enters our home without permission and tortures and tries to murder my mother. Again, the same people, me, grandfather and grandmother, who saved that bird the day before, saved my mother, who was being brutally beaten and locked in a room. First, I heard the commotion. I dashed to the street and alert someone who called my grandparents. My grandmother and grandfather come to the house by truck. My grandfather stops my father at gunpoint and my granny holds my mother who's then saved. I cannot stress this enough, but I know as a fact deep, deep in my heart that the bird that flew in that day was a message about what was to come. That was one of the scariest things I had to experience and also the reason why I think there's more to the world than our eyes can see. But I wonder if anybody has any similar experiences with birds before, or was it specific to us? This happened when I was about 18. I was still living with my mom and brother. I had enough trouble in life that it would actually justify being mentally unwell. But this was beyond that, and weird timing, because things were fine. I was doing relatively good, but in a few months time, I had become increasingly suicidal and lost, just absolutely terrified. I've had spells of walking into rooms and not knowing how I got there. This was beyond the normal forgetfulness. In the middle of this, I had to be hospitalized for a sudden infection, followed by an accident, and it was like the first and last time in life I ever fainted. This is about two events. The worst ones. There are other smaller things that happened, but it's too much stuff to write. I started having weird nightmares that I don't want to describe here for brevity. I prayed this confusion would go away, did some cleansing rituals, and the confirmation came not from me, but what my family saw. They didn't know about me being distressed yet. First event. My brothers in my room were door to door, one and a half meters apart, on a dead end T junction. To the right side of my room was a bathroom. I was in the bathroom. My brother entered my room and started chatting. Long enough for me in the bathroom doing my hair and asked him in a curious way, who are you talking to? He yells and I exit the bathroom. And I enter my room to find my brother inside my room looking white as ash in the face. He said he saw a girl sitting on my bed facing the wall. Long black hair like mine and looked like me in a dress and for quite a while thought she was me and was attempting to talk to her but no reply. My brother is really afraid of these things and he wouldn't touch anything paranormal. Me and my brother talked about it and I said don't tell mom just don't I'll deal with this. We both went to bed. The next day I'm frantically thinking how to get rid of this spirit because now I'm kind of screwed. Second event. After dinner, we were all sitting at the table. We had all just come home, and my dog is happily sitting by us just waiting for some yummy food from the table as usual. When he gets up, faces away from us, and starts wildly barking and growling at the front door. This makes my mother look to the door, to my back. She then gets up and says something like, Who are you? Get out! By now, we're all standing. The dog has an aggressive posture growling and has all hairs on his back standing. Our front door had metal bars in front and a huge sliding iron gate that we never heard opening. We're all like, who was that? How did they get here? My mum just goes, calm down, never mind. It's not real. She does the sign of the cross and says a little prayer. 
We then told my mum about event number one and she said, well, then that's that. We were so scared. We didn't know what to talk about it anymore. He told us to ignore it. Later, when I asked my mom, mom says she saw a woman with long curly black hair and a simple cotton dress. She thought it was a beggar or crazy person that had somehow entered the house. She had her hands grabbing the bars and face pressed between. She looked at the dog, looked at my mom, turned foggy and disappeared. The front door was very well lit. The next day was a Saturday. We were free and my mom was like a drill sergeant and we must have spent half a kilo of rock salt, loads of incense, sage, herbal and salt bath for all the family. We did a full exorcism of the house. The dreams faded away in about a week. I started recovering, having an appetite again, and my mind was clearing up. The forgetfulness was gone. I was doing good again like I was never even unwell in the first place, but I was quite disturbed and a bit scared. I wonder if I picked up this companion at the hospital. I've done my fair research since I've been an adult, and I've never forgotten this chain of experiences. I moved in with my father when I turned nine years old. He was a single dad, worked long hours, and it was just him and myself living in a four bedroom house in East LA. I was pretty grown up for being so young, walked myself to and from school, did my own laundry, could even make myself basic meals and stuff, so it was completely normal for me to get home from school make a snack and get cozied up with my PlayStation and play something for a bit before my dad came home from work. Skip forward to living there for about two months and I started feeling weird. Like I wasn't alone in the house. I kept telling my dad how I felt. He tried saying it was normal. It was a big move for someone my age and I was just starting at a new school, so on. I started waking up having panic attacks about dying. I seriously was having an existential crisis at nine years old. One day, playing some PS1 and probably drinking some Tang, I saw this shadow walk down the hallway. I knew I was home alone. I got so fucking scared. I told my dad and he brushed it off. Same thing happened a few days after that, except I was now positioning myself so that I was fully facing the door while being in my room. Nothing was going to get past me. It happened pretty fast, but I knew for sure it was a woman. She had long black hair and was wearing a weird, older silk red dress. I used to go to my dad's friend's house after school the very next day and continued. I made sure I was never home alone again. The whole time my anxiety about dying had turned into an obsession. I started to not be able to sleep and was scared to take showers with the door closed. I started sleeping with lights on and I never needed a nightlight before. This is where it starts to get even creepier. A few months go by and my anxiety starts to go away a bit. I'm now down to just a nightlight in the corner. Hallway light can be turned off. She started appearing again, but she was going into my room. I would feel a slight pressure like someone sitting on the end of my bed. And then it would feel like someone was gently running their fingers through my hair. The first few times I remember being paralyzed. I know it wasn't sleep paralysis because I was positive I'd never fallen asleep. But when I would feel the pressure after that, I would curl into a ball under my blankets until I felt the presence be gone. I've never seen her again, but I swear I never feel alone. And it's been 20 years. It happened, I'd say, late summer when the weather was becoming colder. I often went with my father whenever he was doing work on boats and ships. My father was a fisherman and was repairing a friend's large wooden fishing trawler, which was in an alcove. He was doing a job which involved a technique called caulking. And while he was doing this, I became bored and looked around for something to do. I looked off the port side of the boat and saw a boy It was up against the shoreline, and I decided I wanted to play with it. When I got off the boat and made my way over to it, it was a little bit taller than me. It was round and very rusted. 
I started pushing it out into the water, and it would travel for a bit before beaching itself again. This happened two or three more times, before it started traveling by itself. I felt this unusual, and watched as it traveled along and then went into the embankment. I was very confused by what just happened, as where it went in was just solid rock. I went over to where it had entered the embankment to find a stone archway made from three large slabs of which seemed to be made of sandstone. When I peered in to see where the boy went, it was floating across a tropical ocean towards beach. The beach had palm trees and the ocean was sky blue. It would look like one of the islands from the Maldives. I was completely blown away and in the back of my mind I wanted to swim in the direction the boy went toward the beach. I stood there for quite a while, contemplating if I would step through the door and swim towards the beach, but also concerned about what would happen if I did. I decided to call my father to come and see what I found. This was world changing for me, but things were about to get stranger. I loudly called for my father to come to me, but there was silence. I called again and heard him say, I'll be there in a minute. So I waited. He never came. I was close to stepping through, but had a weird conscious thought that my father would be responsible for my disappearance. And of course I didn't want that. So I decided against going in and headed back to the boat. When I got back to my father, he was still corking the deck. The first thing I said was, why didn't you come when I called you? He looked up at me, completely confused, and said something along the lines of, I never heard you call me. Now I was even more confused. After this, I never said anything more, and we packed up and left for home. As we're heading back up the hill next to the boat, I looked at the direction of where the doorway slash portal was, and wondered what would have happened if I'd have gone through. I bet you're thinking right now that this was something my child mind was making up, or I was hallucinating, right? Wrong. When I was in my early 20s, I asked my father about that day, and he remembered. He remembered the boy, and he remembered the question I asked him. I didn't ask anything further, as this confirmation carved it into stone for me. I also did a little investigating into the timeline, and everything lined up. My father passed away many years ago, and so I couldn't ask him any more questions. I have to think back to that day, and wished I'd just gone through. With all the shitty things in this world, and the way my life is now, I think my life would have been better if I had. I contemplated the situation throughout my life and the mammoth implication of such a feat. Changing space and time in order for a being or entity to get me to go through the portal. I could only come to three conclusions. A god, aliens, or that this world is a simulation. And I saw an intentional glitch in the matrix. And that the operator spoke to me directly and had the ab ability to mimic my father's voice. This wasn't the only unusual situation to happen to me in my life, but it was definitely one of the most awesome memories I will treasure forever. I grew up in Stockton, and was always moving around until I was about seven, when my mom bought our first house and we got to settle down. The house wasn't old, maybe 15 years at the time, the house was great. At first, we had our own rooms, nothing unusual. We were normal kids, we played with the neighborhood kids. Our cousins would come over every so often. This was about six months after we'd moved in. I was in bed, and at the time, I had to share a room with my younger brother, who was six at the time. My grandpa was using what was his room temporarily. My mom had tucked my brother and I into bed. I was laying facing the wall and about an hour had passed. I felt something blow on my neck. My brother was a butt as most kids are and would mess with me. I assumed it was him, so I told him to go back to sleep. He didn't answer, so I turned to look at him and he's in bed. And I call his name, no answer. So I get up and look at him and he's passed out. Like completely asleep and this kid is a heavy sleeper. So I'm thinking as a now eight year old, maybe a draft not thinking too much of it. I was finally able to fall asleep, but I was woken up to our old school box TV on static and at full volume. Mind you, this was on a TV stand in the very left top corner of the room. 
It was a stand that was held up by the wall and too high for me and my brother to turn on, even if we were on our beds or our toy boxes. And we had lost the remote about a month before this happened. I had to wake up my mom and she turned it off and everything was fine for a few months after that. Every so often, I would feel like someone was breathing on my neck, but would never think anything of it, because I never saw anyone or heard anything. So fast forward, I was nine, and my cousins came over for the weekend. The kids being kids, we played hide and seek tag. There were a total of five of us playing, me, my brother, and my three cousins. It was about midnight, and everyone was playing. The adults were downstairs, and I was in my room hiding in the closet when my older cousin ran in and found me and tagged me, so I started to run after her until I was stopped dead in my tracks. It felt as if I ran into a wall, but I was at my door and it was open, and there was nothing there. I'm looking straight in front of me into the bathroom that was directly in front of my room, and I see what looked like a little girl the same age as me, but wearing stereotypical old-fashioned 1800s little girl dress, and she was this sickly pale blue colour, all the lights were off, but it felt as if she was being lit up by lights, and she just stood there and ran down the hall. I stood there for a second thinking what just happened, and I walked down the hall still stuck on what happened. My cousin then ran into and asked if her she was in the bathroom, but she wasn't, no one was in the bathroom, or even in my room besides me. I eventually forgot about it, but everything in the house never felt right again. The house never felt welcoming or like it was before it felt angry and I felt like someone or something was watching me anywhere I went in the house. I felt something watching me. When I would leave the house for school, I never felt something watching me only when I was in the house. As for about five months, I was walking home by myself because I begged my mom to let me start going home after school. Instead of going into the after school program, my elementary school had and my brother stayed there. My older brother, who was 16 at the time, was still at his high school that was in a different part of town, and he would usually hang out with his friends, so I would be the only one home. And I was excited. I felt like a cool teenager while only being 10. Now I'm going to describe this house setup because it's important for this next encounter. The house was in a court, and when at the front door, you'd walk into the living room and directly in front of the front door were the stairs that curve up to the right, and at the top of the stairs was the master bedroom on the left. With my little brother's room, and to the right, down a little bit of a hall, was my room, the bathroom, and my older brother's room. When you look past the stairs, you have the living room, and walking back, you can see the dining room. And behind a wall on the left is the kitchen, where the house phone's at. This is important. Then to the right of the dining room was a half bathroom, a closet, and the garage door. The garage was directly under my room, the bathroom and my older brother's room. The backyard was able to be seen from each window from the back of the house, and we had a dog. She was very quiet and never barked even at the people who'd walk before the over nine foot cement wall that divided the backyard and the semi-main street. I walk into the house assuming I'm alone, and I do my normal routine and putting my shoes away, hanging up my backpack and heading to the kitchen to call my mom on the house phone. That I got home safe, we usually had a five minute conversation, not too long, and I asked my mum if I can have a soda that was kept in the outside fridge in the garage. She says yes, we say bye and all that, and I hang up. I walk into the garage, and as I'm grabbing the soda, I hear the floor upstairs creak, like someone stood up. I didn't think anything of it until after that initial creak. It sounded as if someone was walking from the bathroom to my room, and then to my brother's room. Like someone is checking or looking for something, so I open the garage door, and I stand in the doorway. The creaking stopped, and I thought it was my older brother home early, so I call his name and nothing. And then I call his name and still nothing. But I ask if he wants me to grab him a soda too. And then I heard the creaking again, but this time it sounded as if they were running with heavy stomps down the hall and down the stairs. Out of reaction, I run back into the garage and hide behind the side of the fridge. You can't see if you open the garage door. I'm scared now because those steps don't sound like my brother's. I hear the steps run down the stairs and just stop. And I'm still hiding and now getting really freaked out. 
no one opened the door. Nothing happened for about five minutes, and then I heard the stairs creak because the fridge is on the wall between the garage and the stairs. The footsteps sound heavy, but walking speed up the stairs and down the hall back to where the creaks were when I went in the garage in the first place. I stand there crying my heart, racing for about 20 minutes, trying to work up the courage to run inside and grab the house phone. During that whole time, the creaks kept doing still as if someone was looking for something. I keep my eyes on the clock that we had on the wall in the garage and it's now just turning 2.35, meaning no one will be home for another four hours. I stood in front of the door and finally worked up the courage to run inside and grab the house phone. The second I opened that door, the steps turned heavy and ran again, but I made it back to the garage before it made it down the stairs all the way and I called my mom immediately. I'm bawling and the only thing I could manage to get out was steps upstairs, hiding, garage. My mom is now trying to calm me down and tells me to get my dog from the backyard to stay in the garage and she's going to call my brother to have him come over and check it out. So I grab my dog and she immediately goes crazy barking and dead stares at the garage door to the house. She's never done this before. Her temperament had always been very calm and collected but now she was not close to her usual self. I sit and my dog who is a black lab stands in front of me still barking. It felt like forever before my brother showed up. The entire time the steps kept going back and forth, back and forth, and things were hitting the ground. It sounds like a robber, the steps looking for something, but why would they stay if someone was already home, and after hearing my voice knowing I'm a child, they had an opportunity to leave, but didn't. When my brother shows up, I hear his truck pull up and come to a shriek, and I hear him and about five of his friends run into the house and run around the whole house looking for someone. And my brother comes in the garage and asks if I'm okay and what happened and I tell him. His friend comes in the garage and says there's no one here. They checked every door and window and everything was locked. Nothing disturbed except for a few things that were on the floor in my room. If there was someone in the house, they would have seen that person. As if it was in a court and they couldn't get back over the backyard fence without using a ladder. I refused to go into the house and so my brother carried me to the truck and put me in and brought my dog too, and had a truck full of his friends head to his best friend's house. We stayed there until my mom came to pick us up. We don't talk about it. My younger brother asks and my mom just says that I got scared. I had to be carried by force back into the house and I refused to sleep or even go in my room for a month. After that incident, I felt as if I was watching, but only in the house. A few other things happened in the house after that, but what happened that day was terrifying, but doesn't compare to the feeling of being watched, my things being moved or broken, or even seeing shadows in my peripheral vision. That was a daily occurrence, especially when I had to go to bed. I always had the covers over my head and music playing, so I didn't have to hear anything, but I always would feel something like a hand on my arm or back, or breathing on my neck. I moved out of the house when I was 13 to live with my dad and soon after my mom moved in with my stepdad in a different house and what had happened in that house in Stockton just moved with me to my dad's but then moved to the house my mom lives in currently only bothering me when I visit my mom's house. I'll just point out that one we did not own a dog at the time, and two, I mentioned this to my mum not too long ago, and she said she remembered this night too, and that I wasn't dreaming when I ran downstairs to her. I always thought that maybe I was making it up, but when she said she remembered it too, I kind of had to believe it then. Anyway, I can't remember how old I was, maybe three or four, as my little sister was still a newborn baby at the time. I used to hate going to bed at night. In fact, I hated nighttime in general. I would see things around the house in the shadows mostly. I think they were dogs or animals at least. And I remember them growling at me if I came too close. I specifically remember one of them under the dining room table and I ran to my mum screaming. The fear was so strong. One night I was in bed and laying on my left side. I remember this clearly as when I opened my eyes I could see the door in the distance. 
After a while of laying there, I felt what I can only describe as paws begin to walk up my side. Sounds impossible, which I completely agree with, but that's what I felt. And then something hits on my hip bone. I opened my eyes and directly in front of me was a dog. It looked like a long-eared spaniel type dog and as gross as it sound, I also remember that it opened its mouth and had vomit on its tongue. I remember feeling terrified as I turned away from that and looked up at the thing sitting on my hip. It was a black dog with a thin body and sleek fur, like a greyhound's, and it had a pointed face and pointed ears that pointed upwards over its head. Its eyes stood out, but I can't remember any colour. I quickly looked to my right and there was a Jack Russell slash Terrier type dog there that started growling when it knew I could see it. I remember being frozen in fear as I looked up at the black dog and watched its head turn slowly and then suddenly snap to look at me. At that point, I somehow got out of bed and ran to the top of the stairs. I'm pretty sure there was a baby gate there at the time, so I have no idea how I got past it. But I remember looking back into my room and seeing all three dogs turn to look at me before beginning to run towards me. I got down the stairs and burst into the living room where my parents and baby sister were. The dogs didn't follow as far as I knew, and I remember my mum asking me what I was doing. I very clearly remember saying, I wanted to see my sister. No idea why I didn't tell them what just happened, but my mum didn't say anything else or make me go back to bed. She just let me lay on the sofa with her and hold the baby. I never had another experience like that after, but I was absolutely terrified of dogs from that day, until I was about 9 or 10. Like I said, my mum remembers me coming into the living room and saying about the dream a while later. I've often spoken about it when the paranormal comes up, but never tried to look into it until recently. I can't find anything that really matches my experience, and I can't find any history on the house I used to live in, which is a shame. But after we moved house, I never saw any shadow dogs again. It's an interesting experience all the same, but I thought I'd share. If anyone's had any experiences with anything like this, I'd love to hear about it. I'll start off by saying that the person that told me the story was someone I worked with, though I cannot say in what capacity due to strict confidentiality. Suffice to say that this person was an older gentleman in his 70s and had absolutely no reason to make this up, especially not the time of our conversation. With that said, I'll tell the story from his perspective, exactly as he told it to me. I used to work at a company many years ago, and the workforce consisted of mostly men, all of whom were the epitome of down-to-earth, straight-talking northerners. We had a laugh, bantered back and forth and whatnot, but we worked our asses off, and sometimes the pressure got too much. One of the men, David, not his real name, had been experiencing a headache all day and was getting worse. He managed to make it through the day until lunchtime, when he suddenly went missing. I looked for him for ages, worried about what might have happened to him, until I found him sitting on the ground in an unused room, clutching his head in agony. He'd gone to find somewhere quiet, hoping it would ease the pain in his head, but it was only getting worse. No amount of painkillers took the pain away, and it was clear he was in a bad way. At that point, one of the others, Carl, again, not his real name, had caught up with us. Now the thing about Carl was that he claimed to be what he called a faith healer. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I do know that whatever he did to people, it worked. That day, I stood there and watched as Carl put his hands on David's head and slowly, gradually, the pain in his face went away. I watched that man go from agony to pain-free in front of my eyes, and I honestly can't explain it. It was incredible to watch. After that, David went back to work, amazed at how good he felt, but confused at what had actually happened. As for Carl, he never spoke about it, and no one dared ask him, so we left it at that. A year or two later, I was working with Carl at another site. It was some kind of maintenance job, and we were being shown around by a guy who worked with the company but travelled a lot so wasn't too close with most of us. I'll call him Mark so it doesn't get confusing. He was probably in his late 50s, he was a good guy, and was also aware of Carl's abilities, as most people in the company were. 
Anyway, we were all chatting away and catching up, getting the work done and discussing various things. Everything was normal. It wasn't until all three of us were back at Carl's house, where he'd offered us a drink on our way home from work, did Carl turn to Mark and say, Listen, I don't want to scare you, but there's something following you. It's been standing over your shoulder all day. Now, me and Mark looked at each other. In any other situation, I'd have laughed at whoever said something as daft as that. But we all knew Carl very well, and the man never spoke about stuff like that. Unless he had to. Mark gave a kind of worried laugh and asked, What are you on about? To which Carl said, I've seen a black figure standing behind you all day. I saw it as soon as we all met up, but didn't want to say anything as we weren't in a safe place. It's very evil. Probably demonic. So I had to find a way to tell you. Mark looked pretty scared by this point and asked if it was still there, at which point Carl shook his head and said, No, it's outside for now. It can't cross the threshold to my house as it's protected from things like that. That's why I wanted you to come over. You need to get cleansed, or it'll try to hurt you. After that, Carl gave him a few things to help protect him, and gave him a number to call to help him get rid of whatever was following him. But Mark was pretty shaken up. Carl had said that as soon as he left the house, it would follow him again, but it wouldn't be able to hurt him while he kept those tokens of protection with him. After we left that day, I only ever saw Mark once or twice. He never mentioned if he got cleansed or if anything else happened, but the dead seriousness in Carl's voice when he talked about the black figure will always stick in my mind. It's been a few years now since I saw this gentleman that told me the story, but it pops into my head from time to time and I often scare myself thinking about it. I have no idea what a faith healer is as I've never actually looked into it. I'm not at all religious either and neither was this gentleman who told me about it. So if anyone has any similar stories or personal experiences with something like this, please let me know. Only a handful of people know about what I'm about to tell you. Everything is real, and it happened in my childhood home. I grew up with my mom and my two older brothers. Our house was like any other normal house, except we were aware of a spirit that remained in the house when he died and his wife ended up selling it to my mom. His name was Bill. The first time I remember feeling his presence was one night when I got up to go to the bathroom and I felt footsteps on the roof. They were very audible and sounded almost like drums. I actually thought they had to be more than a few people up on the roof. I woke my mom up, but she swore she didn't hear anything. Also, I clearly recall many times when doors would open or shut on their own without any wind. Shampoo bottles getting knocked on the floor. Picture frames falling off the walls for no reason. We'd joke and said Bill was acting up again. Other times, we'd hear our names being called from another room, only to find out nobody was calling for us. The calling sounded so real, and it was usually my mom's voice calling for me, but she always swore it wasn't her. At some point, my mum got someone to sweep the house. I was still young, but I remember a lady came and using something with a smoke thing, probably sage, said some words in each room and used a straw broom to sweep the spirits away. They went quiet for a year or two. However, every member of our household seemed to always have bad luck after that. Eventually, we all began to see shadow people in the house, usually in corners. Sometimes people who would come visit us mentioned they could also see shadows in the corner or feel weird in our house. Things moved right in front of us. Power would go out in the whole house. Once, as I was about to leave the house, the front door slammed shut right in front of me. I got so scared, I ran to my mom crying. During the days, things were not malevolent, sometimes creepy, but nothing that made me feel unsafe. Once I was hiding from my mom, As a joke, I used to creep in a room where she was and scare her by yelling boo. This time, as I was hiding from my mom, I was behind the bathroom door, waiting for her to walk by the hallway, when suddenly I heard a very clear whisper by my ear. Boo! My heart stopped. I looked around and ran out. I always had nightmares growing up, so my mom let me sleep in her room. My nightmares started to get much worse. I'd wake up screaming in the middle of the night. My mom, scared half to death, would have to calm me down. Sometimes, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and couldn't get back to sleep. 
One of those nights, I swore I could see a dark shadow of a person walking towards me. I closed my eyes and opened them again. It was still coming to me. I cowered under the blankets and started crying, trying to listen carefully. After a few minutes of silence, I heard a little girl giggle. I screamed and tried to wake my mom up. When she woke, she turned the light on and was so upset and told me I was just having nightmares, but I know I was awake. Another night, I woke up again in the middle of the night. I didn't want to open my eyes this time. I felt very uneasy, so I pulled the covers up. A few minutes later, I felt someone, something, touching my forehead. I didn't dare scream this time. I just kept saying to myself, it's not real, it's not real. Crazy stuff kept happening at night when I'd wake up in the middle of the night. I hated sleeping, and many times tried to do things to get myself tired before going to bed, so I wouldn't wake up before daytime. It worked sometimes, but not always. As soon as I was older, I started staying at a friend's house as much as I could. Later on, I stayed with my boyfriend, and when I got into college, I roomed with a friend, even though the university was about 20 minutes away. I eventually moved out at 20 for good. Now as an adult, whenever I visit home, I feel the presence as soon as I walk in the house. I try not to sleep there if I can help it. I know my mom and my brothers have their own stories to tell. We've never gotten together to tell each other our experiences. Maybe we should. Maybe we could make a book together. Well, it happened to me when I was at boarding school in Shimla, India, many years ago. I was sleeping in the senior dormitory, along with some 20 other boys, and my bed was positioned in the corner of the long room, at some distance from the others. There was no shortage of pranksters in our dormitory, and one had to look out for introduction of stinging nettle or of pebbles or possibly even a small lizard under the bed sheets. But I wasn't prepared for a body in my bed. At first thought, a sleepwalker I'd mistakenly got into my bed, and I tried to push him out, muttering, Davinda, get back into your own bed. There isn't room for the two of us. Davinda was a notorious sleepwalker who had even ended up on the roof on one occasion. But I, it wasn't Davinda. Davinda was a short boy, and this fellow was a tall, lanky person. His feet stuck out of the blankets at the floor of the bed. It must be Ranjit, I thought. Ranjit had huge feet. Ranjit, I hissed. Stop playing the fool and get back to your bed. No response. I pushed him, but without success. Body was heavy and inert. It was also very cold. I laid there wondering who it could be. Then it began to dawn on me that the person beside me wasn't breathing. And I had the horrible realisation that there was a corpse in my bed. How did it get there? And what was I to do about it? Vishal, I called out to a boy who was sleeping a short distance away. I said, there's a corpse in my bed. Vishal, did you wake up? You're dreaming, Ray. Go to sleep and stop disturbing everyone. Just then, there was a groan, followed by a dreadful gurgle from the body beside me. I shout out bad things at the top of my voice, waking up the entire dormitory. Lights came on, there was total confusion. The housemaster came running in. I told him and everyone else what happened. They came to my bed and had a good look at it, but there was no one there. In my instance, I was moved to the other end of the dormitory. The house was perfect. Johnson took over my former bed. Two nights passed without further excitement, and a couple of boys started calling me Funk and scared the cat. My response was to punch one of them on the nose. Then on the third night, we were all woken by several ear-splitting shrieks, and Johnson came charging across the dormitory, screaming that two icy hands had taken him by the throat and tried to squeeze the life out of him. Lights came on, and the poor old housemaster came dashing in again. We calmed Johnson down and put him in a spare bed. The housemaster showed his torch on the boy's face and neck, and sure enough, we saw several bruises on his flesh, and the outline of a large hand. Next day, the offending bed was removed from the dormitory, but it was a few days before Johnson recovered from the shock. He was kept in the infirmary until the bruises disappeared, but for the rest of the year, he was a nervous wreck. Our nursing sister, who had looked after the infirmary for many years, recalls that some 20 years earlier, a boy called Tompkins had died suddenly in the dormitory. He was very tall for his age and apparently suffered from a heart problem. 
That day, he had taken part in a football match and had gone to bed looking pale and exhausted. Early next morning, when the bell rang for gym class, he was found stiff and cold, having apparently died during the night. He died peacefully, poor boy, recalled our nursing sister, but I'm not so sure. I can still remember the dreadful gurgle from the creature in my bed, and there was a struggle with Johnson. No, there was nothing peaceful about that death. Tompkins had gone most unwillingly. I don't know how many of you will remember this, but in the summer of 2003, there were widespread power outages in the northeast region of the United States, plus parts of Canada. I was 11 years old and was living with my grandma in an old suburb of Staten Island, New York. Because of this story, I'll always distinctly remember those two or three days without power. At the time, my family had just recently moved into a new house and had probably only been there for a few months. The house was old, probably built in the early to mid-1900s. As soon as we moved in, we immediately felt something in the house. Cold spots, random noises, shadows, voices, etc. We realised that the house was haunted, but we never really felt that we had to leave because of it. My grandma and mom are sensitive to spirits, and we'd lived in other haunted houses before, so we were kind of used to it. Our ancestral house in the Philippines was much worse, so we really weren't in a rush to move so quickly, after just moving in. In this house, I only ever saw shadows and heard voices, while my grandma and mom saw full body apparitions. That is, until the blackout happened. So one night during the blackouts, it was hot as hell. The temperature was probably in the high 80s or low 90s with no air conditioning due to the power outages. So I asked my grandmother if I could sleep in her room since it was on the third floor in the coolest part of the house. She obliged and I fell asleep next to my grandmother after playing Pokemon on my Game Boy under the covers for a few hours. I was woken up by a strange noise in the middle of the night a few hours later, probably around 1 or 2 a.m. It was freezing cold, so cold that I forgot about the power outage and thought that the AC was on. The noise sounded like a distant wailing, kind of like a really high-pitched police sirens if it was a block away. It was loud enough to wake me, but somehow still sounded really far away. At this point, I'm not really thinking much of it since the window was open and I assumed the noise was coming from outside. I'm still under the covers and wide awake, so I grab my Game Boy and start playing Pokemon in silence so that I don't wake my grandmother. I was obsessed with the game. As I'm playing, I notice the noise getting louder and closer. This continued for another minute or so, until I started to get really annoyed. Just as I was about to pull the covers off to investigate, I felt a weight shift on the bed and heard the mattress spring squeak by the foot of the bed. I looked over to check if my grandma was still there or if she somehow left without me knowing. She didn't. She was still there. I slowly peek out from under the covers and see a pale skinned woman with long dark hair sitting by the foot of the bed. She was wearing a light coloured dress and face towards the wall. Her hands were pressed against her face and eyes and she was crying, which I now realise is the noise I'd been hearing. I was terrified and shaking, so I turned to wake my grandmother, but I realised she's already sitting up and praying the rosary in silence. She then turned to me and said, don't worry, she won't hurt you. She visits me every night. I'll never forget it. I was freaked out and just shut my eyes until I fell back asleep. Anyways, after that night, I never slept in my grandmother's room again. I continued to feel presence in the house, but I never heard the wailing or saw the woman again. My grandmother, on the other hand, said that the woman continued her nightly visits until we moved a year later. I grew up in southern Louisiana and as a kid, I loved going to my grandparents' house to do things such as fish, watch movies with my grandfather and cook with my grandmother. This house is a beautiful home still standing, surrounded by stately oaks and broad magnolias. It has a long winding driveway where moss hangs from hundred year old oak trees over the gravel drive and a beautiful pond off to the right side of the drive. It's an absolutely beautiful home on an absolutely gorgeous piece of land. The woman who built the house owned a small shop in a suburb of South Louisiana. 
This woman was very beautiful, and from what I've been told, never missed an opportunity to dress up in her high heels. She was married to a man who had been in a car accident, I think, and was severely handicapped. As his condition got worse, she had to sell the house and downsize in order to pay for his medical bills. When my grandparents bought the house from her, she was extremely devastated that she had to let it go. She was legitimately obsessed with the house. It was like a child to her. She was so obsessed with the house, in fact, that there were several times that my grandparents went out to run errands and came back to her there, peering into the windows of the house to check on it. Fast forward some years after she moved out of the house, and my grandparents were settled. She was killed by a notorious Louisiana serial killer that tormented South Louisiana from 1992 to 2003. She was one of seven plus victims in the terrible killing spree. Fast forward again years after her murder, and I start spending many weekends at this house loving life, being a normal kid. I had no idea about the previous owner, but always felt very uneasy when I was in the house by myself. Hearing random knocks and footsteps was normal, and my grandparents always just attributed it to the house shifting. My grandmother's two Siamese cats, Wally and Ernie, were always stood and sort of comforted me. And when I was alone in the house, and I always thought they were also to be attributable to the random noises. When my brother and I would go over to their house as young kids, we would sleep in the bed in the master bedroom with my grandmother and the two cats. We would constantly be woken up by weird noises and what sounded like someone walking on the wood floor in the hallway, connected to the closet. What's extremely creepy about this is that in front of the closet, there were high heel marks permanently marked into the old creaky wood floor where the previous owner would get dressed and put on her high heels. One night, I clearly remember a knocking and one of her cats getting extremely agitated to the point where it stood up on all fours, looking in the direction of the noise with its hair standing up on its neck. The feeling that someone in the room was extremely startling and spine chilling. This started to happen more times than not when we went over there. At this point, I started to ask my grandparents questions due to the fact that I was scared shitless every night I went there. They acted like they had no idea what I was talking about. I'm sure... That was to be sure not to scare me. One day, I was in the office slash computer room at the front of the house by myself, while everyone else was outside fishing. I was genuinely enjoying myself, drawing a picture of a pelican that I had pulled up on the computer. Sitting next to me was a stack of DVD cases, stacked about four or five high on the desk. When I looked down to resume my pelican drawing, the stack of cases were forcefully pushed off the desk, and landed about two or three feet away on the floor. I simply couldn't believe my eyes. I got up and ran outside as fast as I could. When I told the story to my grandparents, they were extremely skeptical and just kind of laughed it off. At this point, I was genuinely convinced that something was wrong with the house. One night, not long after that event, while watching a movie with my grandfather, something happened to me that I will never forget. My grandfather had fallen asleep and was laid back in his recliner, delivering his trademark loud snores. Being that the house was away from any light source, and that it was miles from town, it was extremely dark and quiet when the lights were off. I continued to watch the movie by myself and got the intense feeling like someone was watching me. I tried to brush it off, but it was so intense that it felt like someone was standing next to me, just watching me watch the movie. The room started to feel like it was getting smaller and smaller around me. It genuinely felt like I was intruding on someone else's space. Eventually, in the hallway behind us, I heard footsteps as if someone was walking away in high heels. It was the strangest thing that's ever happened to me. To this day, I have no idea what happened and it will forever perplex me. Not long after that, my grandmother told us the story of the previous homeowner and her obsession with the house. Both of my grandparents are chemists and people who've science, so like me, they don't believe in ghosts. I don't know what it was in that house, but we eventually stopped going over there because it scared that it was beyond belief. In the summer of 2016, the house, along with most of the Baton Rouge area, flooded. It got eight feet of water throughout the whole house and destroyed every wall, and even some of the ceiling. At that time, My family's house flooded as well, so I was living with a friend. 
One day, my grandmother asked if I could let the builders into her house so that they could continue the work. I agreed, picked up the key from her and got to the house early, just so I could experience that energy one last time before they sold it and got rid of it. I walked up to the front door, unlocked it and walked in. To my very pleasant surprise, I didn't feel anything. The house was empty. All of the walls were knocked down and I could see through the whole building from the kitchen. All of the creaky wood floors with high heel marks were torn out. All of the belongings were gone and it was barren. It smelled like a powerful mixture of mud and paint. I genuinely think that this flood took whatever energy that was in the house out with it when it drained. It's so weird because I have such an attachment to that house. I want to own it one day, even though it scared the ever living fuck out of me in my youth. So when I was in high school, I was staying at a friend's house one night. They had two spare bedrooms because his sister had moved out to go stay with her mom and the other was with the grandmother before she passed away. Late one night, as we were in the kitchen looking for something to snack on, we started to hear the squeak of the rocking chair coming from the grandmother's room. We decided to just go to his room for some gaming to take our mind off it. About an hour later, we decided to head to bed. Well, he did at least. I went to the second spare room, the sister's old room, and was just laying in bed, playing on my phone. A few minutes after laying down, I could hear heavy footsteps in the hallway. As if someone was wearing boots. They had hardwood floors, so it was pretty loud. The steps would go from the kitchen to the bedroom and back. This continued for about 10 minutes. Well, finally, the steps stop. Quick side note, whenever a car would pass by, the headlights would shine directly into the room. It was a shadow of a large man in the corner, probably about six or seven feet tall. Well, all of a sudden, it gets dead quiet, like absolute silence. No snoring from his dad, no cars outside, no barking dogs next door, just nothing. Then without any warning, the closet door slammed open and fell off its hinges. I said, fuck this. I know when I'm not wanted. I quickly gathered my things and left. Never stayed at this house again. When I told him about all this, the next day, he was just like, oh shit. Yeah, that's Dan. He's a dick. When I was a teenager, I had experiences. This is one of them. I don't know what this is, to be honest, and I would love it if someone could help me figure it out. Now let me explain the house so you can better understand the layout. When you walked in the front door, to your left was the living room, and to the right was a closet, and behind that was my room. That was a den that was used as my bedroom due to unforeseen circumstances. From the front door 20 feet to the kitchen, and from my bedroom 10 feet to the kitchen, the stairs to upstairs were to the right between my room and the kitchen. One night, I was in my room on my bed with my cat Sammy. I was watching TV when I heard footsteps. I felt confused because everyone else was upstairs asleep. My cat got to the edge of the bed and stared at the door as the footsteps that I now recognised as high heels moved from my bedroom to the kitchen and then back, always stopping at my doorway. It would stand there for a moment and then pace yet again. A feeling of fear hit me. My cat never stopped looking at the door as these steps kept it pacing for about an hour. The next thing I had pushed them out of my mind till late at night again, I heard footsteps. This time there were two sets, dress shoes and high heels. Again, my first thought was my parents, but they were upstairs asleep and so was everyone else. My cat looked at the door and petted her as I did the same. A feeling of fear hit me again and this thought of, if you go out of your room, it will not end well. About an hour till they stopped and I asked my parents if they had been up or heard anything the last two nights. Just got a confused look and a no. The incident that scared me the most took place when I was about 14. For some background, 
I live in a three-story Victorian house. The incident occurred when a friend, I'll call her S, and I were home alone, getting ready to go meet another friend of ours. It was after school, so I had to change out of my uniform. I left S, drinking a can of Dr. Pepper in the kitchen, on the ground floor, while I went to change in my bedroom on the second floor. I'd nearly finished when I heard this almighty crash from the kitchen, so I ran downstairs to find Dr. Pepper all over the floor and the wall. I asked S what happened, and she insisted that something had knocked it out of her hand, though I didn't really believe her at first. I held her clean up, and she gathered all the sodden paper towels up, walking to the other side of the room where the kitchen bin was. Just as she raised the Dr. Pepper can back to her lips to get the last dregs out, the can flew out of her hand with such force it hit the wall to her right. I know it could be said that she threw it, but I saw the whole thing and the way her head snapped back. There's just no way she could have gotten such power from a flick of her wrist like that. It genuinely looked like someone had walked right up to her and smacked it out of her hand as hard as they could. It even cut her lip. At that point, we were both utterly terrified, which only worsened when we heard heavy footsteps moving above us from the top floor. We ran as fast as we could to the front door, not stopping until we reached the relative safety of the garden. Unfortunately, we then realised we couldn't leave even if we wanted to. I'd left my keys inside and S had left her purse. We decided we absolutely had to go back in, but not without protection. S grabbed the garden rake, holding it across her body, while I stayed close to her back. We grabbed our things, straining to hear more movement, and finally, we heard it again, just as we were leaving the house for the second time. They sounded a lot closer now and faster, like they were moving towards us. We ran for the door, this time with me firmly locking it behind us, hoping to keep whatever it was trapped inside. After that, we refused to return to the house that evening until my dad came home. Still freaks me out to this day. I often hear what sounds like people walking above my bed. The only issue is I'm on the top floor apartment and have two floors to myself. I'll also hear what sounds like people walking above me when downstairs. I have three cats, one dog. I always check to see where they are. My dog's always with me. I don't see the cats making this kind of noise. I was outside once with my dog. Oddly, after watching a lot of spooky videos on YouTube, I saw a shadow person poke its arm out of a bush. Unless my neighbours are always dropping things and the walls are incredibly thin, I think my home is haunted. There are too many noises, too many weird cold or hot spots. I once bought the Satanic Bible to read for information. I wanted to see what was so appealing to the black metal bands I read about. I sat in the same place every night when I would go to sleep. My pup never messed with it until I got to the chapter on how to sell your soul. I woke up to a shredded book. So I'm hesitant to mess with these kinds of forces without guidance. There's so much to read online. I was hoping someone could point me in the right direction. When I was 10, my family moved into a house that was the original train station for the town in the late 1800s. We had been there about a week and everything seemed normal for the most part. My parents didn't have a key for any of the interior doors because they required a skeleton key. I should point out that the layout of the house was strange because the only way to get into my parents' room was to go through my room. Anyway, one morning at breakfast, my dad was late waking up, but when he came to the table, he started asking me who my friend was that stayed the night. I tried telling him that I didn't know anyone, but he was adamant that someone slept over. It took my mom and I a while to convince him that no one was in the house the night before. My dad, who wasn't one to be scared of anything, turned pale and was clearly uncomfortable. He told us that he saw a boy about my age walk out of his closet, so we got out of bed and followed him into my room where the boy went into my closet and shut the door behind him. My dad said he knocked on the door lightly and told the boy to stay out of his bedroom and then went back to bed. The problem with that story is that we had just moved into that house. My parents had boxes stacked in front of their closet. The biggest issue though, 
is that both closets couldn't have been opened in the first place because our landlord hadn't gotten us a skeleton key yet. To this day, my dad doesn't like to talk about that night. It still freaks him out. Years later, I did some searching at the local library and found a microfiche of a newspaper that talked about a nine-year-old that had died on the railroad tracks outside of the house when it was still the railroad station. <laughs>